Hey guys, here today with my February reads. So February turned into quite a indecisive reading month for me. I picked up so many different books and I just couldn't figure out what I was in the mood for. I read bits and pieces of a bunch of different things. Uh, most of which I'm not going to talk about. I'm just going to tell you about the few books that I did actually finish in February. I enjoyed a lot of what I picked up. I was just feeling sort of restless. So the first book that I read in February was actually a reread of Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. I love Mary Poppins. I love the Mary Poppins series. I'm rereading the Mary Poppins books at the moment. So I picked up a cute little box set in January. It was in a previous haul if you haven't seen it. And the new Mary Poppins movie comes out at the end of the year with Emily Blunt and Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, I'm very excited for Mary Poppins Returns. I think it's going to be excellent. And this is, I, I don't know how many times I've read this first Mary Poppins book now, it's a few, um, but there are still things in it that I sort of forget about and love rediscovering. If you've only ever seen the Disney film, the book is quite different. I enjoy both a lot. The books really are just so beautiful. The character of Mary is wonderful. Uh, she's a lot sort of sassier, I would say, in the books. Um, can be a tad grumpy. She's not exactly as sunshiny as she is in the movie. I mean, in the movie she does have her stern moments as well, but she's still a very sweet character in the books. There is a particular scene where we first see her and Bert together, and Bert hasn't made enough money to take her out for tea. And she's incredibly disappointed because she has been looking forward to her raspberry jam cakes. And instead of letting Bert know that she's disappointed, she tells him that she wasn't in the mood for tea anyhow, and that she'd much rather just go on a walk with him. So I really like their little friendship in the book. It's very sweet. I've talked before about a favorite chapter in this book, which is John and Barbara's story, which are the two small babies of the family that don't appear in the film. And this concept that P.L. Travis has of um, children being able to understand and have their own language that they can communicate with animals, with nature, with each other, and then they get to a certain age and they forget it all as they learn to become people and they start understanding sort of human speech. And it is such a sweet little chapter. I absolutely adore it. The writing is beautiful. The concept is so sweet. If you're a fan of the Mary Poppins movie and haven't read the book, I definitely suggest it giving it a try. It is so sweet. Next up, a book that I'm not really sure why I bothered finishing it in a month that I was struggling to choose what to read. I think I just so firmly hoped that it got better. And I actually don't know why I keep doing this to myself with this same author. This is the third book by Karen Joy Fowler that I've read. This is The Sweetheart Season. And I don't particularly like her books. I don't know why I keep trying. I think it's because I think I owned the three books that I've read before I'd actually tried any of them to start with. Um, I think I found them all relatively cheap. And this in particular I think was secondhand. And her concepts are always wonderful. I really like the ideas of her stories. I think they always sound so good, so engaging and exactly like something I want to read. But they never quite hit the mark for me. I've read um, the Jane Austen Book Club, which was a huge bestseller and made into a movie, and I didn't overly like the book or the movie. The movie was okay. The book, I don't know, it just wasn't for me. I've also read The Case of the Imaginary Detective, which completely fell flat for me. And then this one, I kept it on my shelf. I didn't get rid of it despite not enjoying the other two volumes I'd read. Um, because it sounded so good. It's set in 1947 and it's about a group of nine women that start a baseball team. Obviously this is going to be compared to a league of their own. I have heard countless references to this and that and the fact that Karen Joy Fowler actually really doesn't like a league of their own, um, thinks it's too light and fluffy and doesn't explain what that baseball league meant to people or to history and I don't know what to tell you because I quite like a league of their own and this just did not work for me. The story was almost non-existent. There was sort of a bunch of little stories interwoven, but they didn't really come together to create a full picture. Um, the characters weren't as interesting as I would have liked them to have been. Something about her writing doesn't quite work for me. I feel like I should have really liked this and I just 
didn't. There's just something about Karen Joy Fowler's work that just doesn't hit the mark for me. Next up, I finished reading Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Uh, this is the first time that I'd actually read this all the way through. Uh, definitely not my favourite Austen, but still good. This was actually the first manuscript that Jane Austen finished, uh, but it wasn't actually published until a year after her death. She'd had problems with the publisher that originally uh, purchased this manuscript. Uh, she attempted to get it back from him at some point and was unsuccessful. For anyone unfamiliar, this is the story of Kathleen Morland. Uh, it in itself is sort of a satire of gothic literature and there are references to other books in this book. Catherine is maybe one of Jane Austen's more naive protagonists. She's still interesting and likeable, she's just not quite as dynamic as some of her other characters. This still has a lot of the hallmarks of Jane Austen's other work. Her love story and her sort of misunderstandings. Definitely an enjoyable read, especially if you are already an Austen fan. Not where I would suggest to start with her work though. And the last book that I managed to finish off in February was actually this. This is The Masters of British Painting and this is 1800 to 1950 and I picked this up secondhand. Um, I don't have the dust jacket. And it's just a little art history reference book. It goes into a very brief explanation of several artists with some examples of their work. Um, unfortunately a lot of the examples are in black and white which does take away somewhat. These are some Turner paintings and they just don't quite have the same effect in grayscale. But there are some coloured pages in here. I did mainly pick this up uh, because it was a couple of dollars and also just because I wanted these, I wanted to be able to have a look at these sort of brief explanations of um, some artists' lives, mainly as a way to help me decide which artists in this book that I wanted to seek out full um, biographies on because I do enjoy a good biography and I especially like reading about creative people, their process, their lives and this was just a nice little snippet into a bunch of different people that I can then pick and choose from and I've definitely decided to seek out more uh, about some of these artists so just an enjoyable quick little reference read there. And that is actually it. Those are the books that I finished in February. Hopefully March is a more decisive month when it comes to reading. Please let me know if you read anything in February that was spectacular, anything that you would like to share with me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you soon.